In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I beg your pardon for my sins and the grace to spend this time of prayer fruitfully. My Immaculate Mother, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my guardian angel, intercede for me. We are uh, back to our regular monthly means of formation of February, first Sunday. And uh, we are here again before the Lord in the Blessed Sacrament to talk with you, Lord, to ask uh, your uh, enlightenment in our examination of conscience and uh, to see uh, lights in the, these two hours of listening and meditating and uh, forming uh, Recollect, uh, recollecting uh, the past uh, weeks since the last one, no? which was just uh, January. We, are, uh, we started the year and we want to go it regularly. No? And for ourselves, for all our friends, and for the many. Now, uh, even those who are very far uh, can... Uh, uh, can be us, can be invited to join us while before we they have to be around this uh, area of Paranyake or maybe Makati uh, to come over to Southridge. But because of the pandemic, that everything is online, uh, even uh, conferences with Zoom uh, classes uh, of the teachers and students and uh, all sorts of meeting work at home, then this online thing had already proceeded and had been, uh, well, seeing as a tool, very nice tool, uh, including for our uh, formation here uh, in this area. And uh, just like before, we have again our Lord here uh, talking with us. And even just talking, Questioning maybe and say, Lord, you are there all the time. Is it just a piece of bread or is it really physically your body and the body that 
is not just a part, but the whole person, the whole uh, Jesus Christ is in here. It's a mystery. How can you fit there? And, you know, it cannot uh, fit our human mind. But faith, but uh, what our Lord said, that that is my body and that is my blood, do this in memory of me, then that will be me uh, being the food for our eternal life. So he, that's that's why we have him here and we can recall so when 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 did this happen? If not uh, at the Last Supper. At the Last Supper when our Lord was just with uh, those uh, uh, apostles and uh, uh, they were eating but this time he was saying this is my last supper and therefore he got the same bread and the same wine and saying take and eat this is my body the apostles are just listening and said, well, did not question it's the Lord talking. They have seen him uh, talking and teaching and uh, performing miracles, but this uh, look strange. Is the body telling is now giving you as my body it and taking the wine that they used to drink and uh, giving them this is my blood. Wow, body and blood for them to eat and drink and that will be the food not for our physical health or our stomach uh, uh, to, uh, yeah. but it's the food for eternal life Jesus was not joking it was his last supper with the apostles and then he will be going and he will be uh, caught there, you know, in the agony in the garden, and will be uh, led to the crucifixion. So here we have our Lord, and we appreciate very much, and even if we are still wondering what is this mystery, mystery of love, of course, because it's love that drew our Lord to do that. Otherwise, he could have thought, well, I came uh, to save you by assuming the human nature last Christmas. And then, uh, like anyone growing up in that holy family under the care and protection of uh, St. Joseph and Mama Mary, the holy family. We also celebrated the feast day uh, during Christmas. And uh, then at the end, towards the end of my life, the real show of love would be the crucifixion on the cross. Several hours and uh, people running away because they got frightened. They don't want to see that horrible thing. Uh, that will happen to their friend or not ordinary friend. It's the Savior. It's Jesus who said, I came to save you and to save us. That was all enough. He has done his part. But as if not enough, before he left, there was the Last Supper. So that when he has gone up to heaven and say, okay, uh, we'll meet you there, see you there. But for the meantime, I told my disciples it, during the Last Supper, do this in memory of me. Do this in memory of me, doing it again and again, yeah, to recall what I have done together with you. Yes, and that is the eventually the mass that we are attending so much so that uh, even the the ten commandments of moses 
and also the Ten Commandments during the time of uh, our Lord Jesus, he pointed out in that Third Commandment that we have to uh, keep thy Sabbath day holy. It's for the Lord on Sunday. Work, 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 work. Monday to Saturday, maybe Sunday, but make sure Sunday is for rest, Sunday is for the family, but more especially for the Lord. It's that obligation uh, already imposed by the church. Why? It's so important. If you miss it, then it's as if you miss the train. Uh, you're supposed to go somewhere and then no more. Uh, you did not go to the station and it left, leaving be behind you. Do you want to be left behind here? And then looking for something that, uh, you know, I, I have to go up also. I have to arrive to, to my destiny. Well, no more. You miss the mass. Uh, or you, we, we don't give uh, much importance to the third commandment. Because you are busy, you are working, you have a family, you have other plans. How about this mass that is already prepared, that uh, the church? Parish Church has already made a schedule from 6 o'clock or even 5 o'clock, and then 8 o'clock, and then even every hour, if it's a big parish, to accommodate everybody. Come, because it's for you. Our Lord is coming. Don't you want to meet Him? Don't you want to eat Him? If you're ready, of course. If you are ready. To meet, yes, to be there. And then, huh? Uh, the order of the Mass from the, in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And everybody responds, no? And uh, some announcement. And I confess. From then on, down the line to the readings, uh, first reading, second reading, gospel. The priest uh, uh, gives the homily, explain a little bit. Then we say, I believe in God. Prayers of uh, intercessions, then that's the end of the first part. The second, we again look at the, wow, uh, the, the sacristan bringing the bread, the, the, the wine, and the, uh, the chalice to prepare for the offering of the bread and wine. And of course, all our offerings, what do you have to offer? Fruits, uh, you have to offer intentions, uh, so many intentions for this mass. Uh, for our problem in the pandemic, uh, somebody is sick, uh, someone is in quarantine, uh, uh, just uh, for 14 days, uh, some uh, problems in the family because uh, uh, losing a job, we put there in the offertory. And then it's accepted by the Lord and the priest will offer it up, Lord, these are all our poor intentions that you please accept. And now, Lord, here, looking at our good heart, good intentions, many petitions, we'll say, okay, I have listened, I heard uh, all what you want, I take them. And he takes them with him. And then, there you are. Just for a short while, the most solemn, so solemn that the bread that we have offered, the round thing, and the wine that is there, the priest will get those offerings, and the bread, he said, this is my body. And we look up, and when he raises it up like that, it's the body. Oh, that's the bread that we offer a while ago. And down. And then get the wine. And he offer also, this is yeah, this is the this is the, the blood of our Lord. And he offers up. Body and blood of our Lord coming down to the altar in all the masses, preparing for the next part. Where we begin with Amanamin. Amanamin. Now we always sing in the parish.
Why? It's so moving. It's the prayer, Lord's prayer. It's the prayer that our Lord has taught us. Not uh, even close eyes, we can recite, we can pray. And in the Mass, we uh, pray twice with, with our soul. And then there you are. Are you ready? Have you cleaned yourself? Are you sorry for your sins? The, the food for eternal life will be about to be given for free. Those who are prepared, of course, because if our Lord sees that we are not ready, we have not prepared even before coming to Mass, even at Mass, then He will say, eh, for a while, are you ready? Do you know what you are taking? So we have to respond. Yes, I'm prepared, I'm ready, I really desire, I really want to eat you, Lord, to come to me. That should be the desire uh, our Lord will see in all of us. So that then, the communion time will be for us to take. Because we offered something and He is giving it back. But not anymore your offering, the same offering. It is already Himself. It's His body and blood. Wow! Lord, thank you very much. You have thought of that. No, the Last Supper. And since you are living in a short while, after a few days uh, or 40 days after your resurrection, you have thought of something and, and a sacrament. You instituted it to be perpetrated throughout the, the end of times by asking the priests that will that have received the holy order, a sacrament, to repeat it. Do it as in memory of me. So we, we would hear that all, all the time at Mass. And that we recall uh, the Last Supper. It's the Lord's commanding His disciples, commanding us. Now that I, we are priests, then that's what we do every day. And up to the end, the others will come, another will come. So to this 2,000 years of uh, this sacrament being uh, passed on to generation, up to the generation, up to the end of time, until there won't be any more any priests. Whether they have been killed or it's already the end of the world, uh, uh, God knows. Otherwise, when there are ordained priests, and there are masses uh, being celebrated, then our Lord will generously say, I am there again for you, for us, for everybody. For everybody. Look at that. Pause, pause for a while and look into this uh, love that our Lord have for us. Isn't that love? If not, what else do we expect from Jesus or to demand from Jesus? That's very good. That's uh, love. Uh, we want more. What more? He is here 24-7. And that's why sometimes uh, when we uh, pass by and visit the Adoration Chapel, say, okay, Lord, I will do my prayer. Uh, I will uh, say my rosary here. No, I have devotion of uh, the three o'clock. Uh, I have this booklet to uh, read and to pray. 15 minutes, half an hour. I have one hour. Okay. Then after two hours, long enough, because you're really very, huh? you have time and uh, you, you want to be with the Lord, but say, bye-bye, Lord. Bye-bye. I have to go home. I have to be with my family. I have other chores at home. No. Or I have to go to the office early morning after the Mass. That's what we want to do. Go. And I will say, yeah, 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 go. But me, I stay in the tabernacle. He doesn't walk uh, out and say, okay, you're leaving, everybody's leaving. There's nobody here in the palace, in this chapel. Everybody's out. No one is here. And so, 
what am I doing here? If you be in his position, would you wait for nobody meeting you? I just imagine myself. I am in my office, in my room, and supposed to be people will be coming to ask me questions or, you know, tell me things. But this time, everybody is gone. So what will I do? I leave the office. I go. I, I take a walk. Our Lord does not. That's the difference. And if that is not love and saying, well, I stay just in case uh, people will pass by, even one or two, that's enough. How about the whole evening when everybody goes to bed and uh, rest and our Lord says, I stay for tomorrow. There will be another day tomorrow and there will be a mass celebrated. There will be people coming, attending and praying. I am here. So our Lord is always ready for you and for me. We could just say, wow, is that so? Too much. That is too much love. I don't know how to repay. And so, if that is so, do we treasure this obligation that is not any more obligation for me? No, no, I look for it. I will go for it. It's not that I am obliged. No, it's for me. That is how we look at the man. It's for me. It's my meal. It's my eternal life. It's my food that our Lord will come in and I will become part of his body. I will be like Christ because I, I take him every day at Mass because I appreciate it that much. Not only Sunday, obliging me no more. It's because I want to go for it. If I have time early morning, I will get up early morning, make that sacrifice, and be able to attend the 6 o'clock Mass, early Mass. Or if not, because I have to rush to the office and because of the traffic, then uh, maybe before there would be midday mass, afternoon mass. I will go. Why? Because I love the Lord. I love you, Lord. I want to be with you. I want to invite you to come in to my body and soul when I receive you at, towards the end of the mass. And so if that sacrament is, re is, 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 is instituted, uh, the conversion, the transubstantiation of body, of the bread and wine being, becoming body and blood, only during Mass. It cannot be done outside. It has to be within the Mass. You ha we have to attend the Mass. Then, do we appreciate if we don't appreciate it, because maybe we don't understand it, or maybe we do not follow the, the, the order of the Mass, then we go to the most basic, learn it, get to know. And once you know, then you say, oh, this is so important uh, in my life here on earth, which is very short, I would not miss a day. Well, especially for us who are members and for those who are not, well, they are uh, believers. They want uh, to be very close to the Lord. They want to uh, show back even a little the love that the, they have, we have. Then the Mass is the best. There are many other acts of piety, many devotions uh, that we can do. But it, this is the best. Why? Because, well, as we can understand, even Saint Jose Maria, who had a plan of life, you have to pray, you have to say a rosary, uh, you have to uh, have a spiritual reading, uh, you have make a visit, short visit to the Blessed Sacrament anytime during the day. But when it comes to the Mass, wow, he said, the Mass. No joke, it's the root 
and the center of our interior life. Root and center. So much so that if that is celebrated or participated, the day is done. I'm done with the day. Meaning, yeah, completed. You can do the other things, but they are just little things. Because the main one, which is that we have attended, I have celebrated the Mass, that will be it. So much so that, uh, well, of course, uh, there are things to do before and after. And so he put there as the center, uh, anything before the Mass is a preparation. Even if he was sleeping, even it was the night before, he said, I am preparing already for the following day. While resting my body, no, while uh, still not asleep, I will say many spiritual communion, Lord, tomorrow I will be celebrating. Lord, ah, tomorrow I will be eating you. Ah, Lord, ah, wow, the blessing. So he, um, he was preparing himself, and which we are imitating, which we try to do. The, the night before, if that is possible. And then the mass comes early morning uh, for us, for the others, midday. After the mass, then it goes on to say, the, the rest will be thanksgiving, Lord. Thank you for the mass this morning. Uh, now it's noontime. Now it's afternoon, uh, getting into evening and uh, in, in a few hours back to the mass. So it's the center. It's revolving around the mass. Isn't that, isn't that beautiful? Very beautiful if uh, we could uh, uh, understand what we are doing or appreciate. So it's a reminder or a review of what uh, we under, have understood about the mass. And within the mass, this Holy Eucharist, this Blessed Sacrament that our Lord stay, stay here uh, for, for good, for days, for weeks, even months. And if the priest just neglected one of his chapels there and does not go, our Lord will not run away. The, the, the bread will corrupt and disappear. But how poor that is. If the, the one responsible uh, uh, priest neglected, forgot that he had reserved uh, a, a blessed sacrament there in the barrio and forgot about it for months, wow, I don't know. Of course, our Lord will really feel bad. Why you have neglected me? I am here uh, corrupting that body that once it's not and it's corrupt, it will disappear. Our Lord will just leave. But that means there is no love by the priest or by the people uh, in that barrio, chapel. There, how we want uh, to be very, very thankful for staying with us until we can go to heaven. <laughs> it's, the, the idea is that we can go to heaven. That is the... Uh, uh, what what we want to to achieve, you know? Why we, this is the, the center and the, the attraction. All the rest are just busy, you no. Know? But even when we are busy with the many things, these things we will look at it as a precious, uh, just like stones. You no, know? this is the gold. This is the most precious, uh, more expensive, most expensive, and therefore this will be for me. I will never let it be taken away or forget, for, or forget it because I have other things to do. No. Yeah, so examine ourselves. Uh, we'll uh, see how we can uh, improve better even if it's uh, continuing online for some. But uh, for those who have the Paris uh, church already open, then uh, please go and attend with protocols stay uh, with the distances so that at the end of the Mass, when there is communion time, the priest can uh, already give you the food for eternal life. No, for me, as a means to really treasure it, I will keep on repeating, 
It's for eternal life. Eternal life. Eternal life. When the one of present, uh, the problems, the pandemic, the COVID, it's just no. Will disappear or not disappear? But when it's time for me to disappear, Lord, I want to see you. It's you that uh, I'm aiming at uh, putting the mass as the center of my life. Well, we finish our uh, meditation asking Our Lady again. She was there, the first mass at Calvary at the foot of the crucifixion and accompanying Jesus in those uh, moments of uh, pain, no, of uh, well seeing him uh, well suffering, and Mama Mary did not leave. All the rest ran away, but she stayed, and so there could be there would be guarantee that when we call on Mama Mary uh, in our needs, no, in our well sufferings, she will be there ready to accompany us. I thank you, my God, for the good resolutions, affections, inspirations that you have communicated to me in this meditation. I beg your help in performing them. My Immaculate Mother, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. Examination of Conscience, Act of Presence of God. This is my body which is given for you. Do I realize what a wonderful gift God has given us in the Eucharist? How often do I attend Mass and receive Holy Communion? He who eats this bread will live forever. Do I try to spend some time in thanksgiving after Holy Mass, Holy Communion? Do I see Jesus as king, physician, teacher, and friend? Do I place all my joys, sorrows, sadness, and difficulties in his hands? uniting them to his sacrifice? For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Do I realize that at Mass, the sacrifice of Calvary is made present anew on behalf of mankind? Do I seek God's forgiveness in the sacrament of penance, both regularly and whenever I need to? Do I do everything I can to ensure that anyone who needs to go to confession can do so before receiving Holy Communion. When I go to church, do I try to be recollected and prayerful before Mass starts?
the first disciple devoted themselves to the apostles' teachings and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Do I do everything I can to ensure that the whole family attends Mass together? Do I pray for them, for the whole church, for the Pope and the bishops, for the work and its apostolates, and for my own needs? The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Do I ask God, especially during Lent, for the grace to fall more in love with Him? Does meditation on our Lord's passion cause me to renew my resolve never to sin again? Do I make atonement whenever I see God offended? When you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, that your fasting may not be seen by men, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do I look for little mortifications to make life pleasant for others? Do I habitually try to smile? Do I accept disappointment cheerfully? forbearing one another, and if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other. As the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. Am I good at diffusing the little arguments and disagreements that arise at home? Do I avoid complaining in front of the children so as not to give them a wrong impression? Do I count on the help of the guardian angels to identify the needs of my wife and children? Do I find it difficult to forgive?
Whatever your task, work heartily as serving the Lord and not men. At work, do I always try to finish things well for love of God? Have I discovered the value of the hidden work that only God sees? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of this. Am I a slave to fashion? Do I have to share the latest model? Do I give in to whim? Am I temperate? Do I try to foster my children's sense of responsibility from time to time, asking them to abstain from some little treat or luxury? Do I teach them how to dress properly? so that their image reflects who they are, with whom they are, and where they are. Our Lord challenged the rich young man in their conversation. Do I speak about God to young people? And does my own example show them how rewarding it is to be generous with Him? Do I encourage them to show solidarity towards the needy by spending time helping them? Do I ask the guardian angels to help me overcome embarrassment, laziness, and the fear of being badly thought of? A sword will pierce through your own soul also. Do I discover the presence of the Blessed Virgin, Mother of Jesus and our Mother too, at Mass and all day long? And do I love God's will as she does? Act of contrition. Holy Mary, our hope, seat of wisdom, handmaid of the Lord, pray for us.
day to everyone. Let's begin this talk with a prayer. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Saint Gabriel, pray for us. Saint Paul, pray for us. So, good day. Our talk for today is on the topic of dealing with young people. So, uh, as you all know, no, the young people of today are the future of our nation. There's an urgent need to carry out a deep apostolic work, not just with our peers, with the industry leaders who would be the, in the best position to spread God's word, but also with the youth. It is in this context that our prelate had the occasion to say, It is precisely there in Christian homes that the great battles are fought, which then have a repercussion on civil society. It is a silent combat, consisting more of things done than of things said. Let's talk about Christian homes. Whenever I think about a Christian home and what it should be like, I cannot help reflecting on no other model than that of the Holy Family. Although there is not much no, in the Bible on how Jesus was like when he was growing up, except that episode no, <laughs> where he got left behind in the temple, his subsequent teachings reflect a deep understanding of basic human behavior and the value of work, which our Lord Christ would only have learned from his parents. Indeed, parents are the principal educators of their children because a natural relationship exists between paternity and education. Paternity implies a cooperation with God no? in giving life to a person. Well, if a child is still a baby, every parent joins in a divine plan to provide food, clothing, shelter to the young one. So education is helping each child to grow up, to become a person, that is to be a better person, to grow in the human virtues of sincerity, obedience, generosity, and uh, the like, no? And with the help of grace, to grow in the Christian supernatural virtues of faith, hope, charity, prudence, justice, fortitude, and of course, temperance. So, St. John Paul II thus declared uh, in 1981, The right and duty of parents to give education is essential since it is connected with the transmission of human life. It is original and primary with regard to the educational role of others on account of the uniqueness of the loving relationship between parents and children. And it is irreplaceable and inalienable and therefore incapable of being entirely delegated to others or usurped by others. So in order not to educate one's children well, it is fundamental to count on the help of the state of grace, of course, of experience and of common sense. However, all of this, which is necessary, it's not sufficient. It is necessary to learn the job of being a parent, which demands knowing in accordance with one's personal capacity, situation, and personal circumstances, the principles and methods of family education. Again, our prelate has uh, said,
we need to pay special attention to those aspects of basic human and Christian formation which the young people of today are particularly in need of. We need to spread a genuine notion of freedom and therefore of how it is related to the truth and the good. As a result of a proper understanding of freedom, we need to teach the value of commitment, how faith and daily living need to go together, how we should fulfill our duties loyally and keep our word, how we should make the effort to help others. So, with respect to the content of the educational work of the parents, no, the apostolic exhortation, the familiaris consortio promulgated by St. John Paul II on November 22, 1981, lists the following. Formation in values, cultivation of values, and then proper sexual education nourished in chastity. Let's talk about each one in a little bit more detail. No? Um, formation in values, especially a correct attitude of freedom with regard to material goods, by adopting a simple and austere lifestyle and being fully convinced that man is more precious for what he is than for what he has. Children, on the other hand, must learn also to cultivate virtues if they are to be truly the persons that are meant to be. In a society shaken and split by tensions and conflicts caused by the violent clash of various kinds of individualism and selfishness, children must be enriched with a sense of true justice, which alone leads to respect for the personal dignity of each individual and also more powerfully by a sense of true love, understood as sincere solicitude and disinterested service with regard to others, especially the poorest and those in most need. And lastly, the proper sexual education nourished by the virtue of chastity. This virtue empowers them to give themselves away in love to others. Let's go to that first one, no? yung formation in values. We often hear people say, I don't have a choice. La ako magawa. That's not really true. For there is always a choice, an option. Do or not do, act or not act, think or not think, look or not look, taste or not taste, smell or hold your breath. Wag na lang yon. Okay na yon. <laughs> what I'm saying, brothers, is that you know it is among options that our freedom is actually exercised. When choosing one thing rather than another, a preference is shown. I choose this because I prefer it rather than that. For some of you old enough, no, there was this uh, long time ago, no, a Jaworski or Atoyko debate. Of course, nowadays it's uh, Lebron or Michael Jordan, who's the GOAT. The idea of preferences opens up the whole question of values. To exercise a preference means to act according to a scale of values. One chooses this because the choice seems better than the other options. So on who was a better basketball player, some say it was Jaworski because he was rugged and never say die. Forget about his ending the career of Mike Bilbao. Others like Atoyko even if he was uh, somehow linked to uh, this starlet uh, named Alona Alegre. So who? Kung hindi nyo alam, ano, Google nyo na lang. Life is a constant making of choices and revealing of preferences. The person for whom golf, golf rates high in his or her scale of preferences goes to play golf several days 
sometimes even every day in a week. Whereas someone with different values plays tennis, listens to music, visits friends, watches a movie with a wife. A person buying a house or an automobile exercises his choice according to his preferences. But uh, of course, depending on his uh, bank account. No? So the exercise of free will can therefore be described as a response to values. The fact of having options of being able to choose shows the existence of freedom, but does not gauge its dignity. Dignity is attained by the choice of what makes us grow in one way or another. Some values elevate us, but others degrade us. So how do we help the youth to focus on the right values? Freedom is not so much a value as a means by which a person can enrich himself or impoverish oneself in his choices, introducing anti-values no, in his life. We help the youth by teaching them to distinguish between good and evil, helping them to make the right choices. We not only tell them what particular value is good and what is not, we teach them by helping them to appreciate the values that enrich them. Chesterton insists that the aim of life is appreciation. We can and should find ways of helping the youth first to appreciate the spiritual over the material, that uh, the material is much easily lost than the spiritual, and second, develop the positive habits. You know, ako, I, after every bar exam, no, you, you hear a lot of stories of these bar examinees suddenly going to mass more regularly, going to as far as Manawag, no? just to light a candle and praying to God to make them pass the bar. Now, I give various lectures on how to pass the bar every year. In fact, uh, my son is taking the bar this November. And I even never fail to tell them that praying after they take the exams is like asking God to change his answers. No, it's never going to happen. So what I do is I just tell the future examinees that praying to God to make them pass won't really work because God isn't the one taking the exam anyway. Instead, they should pray for strength to keep them studying, good health, pray for wisdom to be able to answer correctly. Only then can they also pray for God's mercy and kindness that whatever happens is in accordance with His will. Sabi nga, no? As the saying goes, nasa Diyos ang awa, nasa tao ang gawa. Let's move on to another content in educational work. The second one is cultivating values or developing character. Character is the integration into one's personality of several fundamental strengths of mind and will, which we call virtues. Now, virtues are internalized, habitual, permanent habits and attitudes by which one deals with life in all its circumstances. Moral virtues are necessary means for a person to reach its goal. So among the virtues to teach are obviously, you know, and all of you should know this, are, of course, faith, the active belief in God, and in all that he has revealed about himself, his church, his justice and mercy, the meaning of life here on earth and afterwards in eternity. We teach him hope the confidence that God will give us the means of salvation and that his loving providence watches over us throughout our lives. Therefore, no problem is unendurable or impossible. Charity, an overriding love of God, a love that shapes and directs all other loves for spouse, children, friends, strangers, even material goods. Parents ought to teach their children to be generous with others, to trust, 
and to avoid anything that may look like criticism, backbiting, or discord among siblings. Prudence. Today, we call this sound judgment, the ability to make the important distinctions in life, right from wrong, truth from falsehood, fact from opinion, reason from emotion, the eternal from the transitory. It is simply being level-headed, the ability to recognize both when we see it. A well-formed conscience is part of this virtue. Justice. This we could call a sense of responsibility. Giving others what is due to them. It is the sense of duty implicit in recognizing the rights of others, including the rights of God. In one sense, this awareness of responsibility is the most important mark for moral adulthood. Maturity is responsibility. Parents should guide their children to be sincere and loyal. Fortitude, a disposition of toughness in one's personality, that is, a willingness and ability to either solve one's difficulties or to endure them. It is the power to overcome or withstand hardship, disappointment, inconvenience, and pain. Its opposite, this is very common today, no? is escapism. Fortitude is essential to real love. Love, after all, is not just a bundle of sentiments. It is the capacity and willingness to embrace hardship for the sake of someone's welfare. Children should be taught to be disciplined in their work and schedule. Temperance. This is self-control, self-discipline. A rational control over the passions and appetites. A self-imposed restraint for the sake of some higher good. The opposite of temperance, also common today, is self-indulgence. A habitual pursuit of pleasure and comfort as ends in themselves. Particular importance has the good example of sobriety and vigilance and the use of television and other mass media which may foster an attitude of laziness. Children should be trained to avoid whims and creating imaginary necessities and to be austere in their expenses. Moreover, parents should develop their children's critical capacity to fight against the attacks of a culture of consumerism. They should also foster the children's cultural interests adapted to each one's age. So, um, you know, uh, to ask your children to go to ballet, to ballets, no? uh, maybe okay, but probably siguro ang uso ngayon is yung mga stage plays, no? like uh, Hamilton. No, so that they will also understand and appreciate uh, those that are apt for their particular age. The last content of educational work is educating in chastity. The difficulty of teaching a child about the relationship of love and sex is more difficult now than ever due to the presence of mass media. In the past, Christian parents seldom exercised the right and duty to provide specific sexual education for their children. Perhaps the need for it was not as acute as it is today. The parents' task was in part fulfilled by the prevailing social models and the role played by the church and the Catholic school in this area. The general culture was permeated by respect for fundamental values and hence served to protect and maintain them. Nowadays, the decline of traditional models has left children deprived of consistent and positive guidance, while parents themselves are unprepared you know, to provide adequate answers. Moreover, the school making itself avail available to carry out programs of sex education, has often done this by taking the place of the family and most of the time with the aim of only providing information and often 
obviously, this leads to the deformation of consciences. In many cases, parents have given up their duty in this field or agreed to delegate it to others because of the difficulty and probably their own lack of preparation. I mean, diba, we continue to watch movies wherein the parents have difficulty in answering the question, where did I come from? So what happens? The child now resorts to the internet to seek out the answer. And uh, the instruction is always less than desirable. The natural method for the sexual education is a personal dialogue between parents and children. It is recognized that any child or young person has the right to withdraw from any form of sexual instruction imparted outside the home. Through this formation for chastity in the family, adolescents and young people learn to live sexuality in its personal dimension, rejecting any kind of separation of sexuality from love, understood as self-giving, and any separation of the love between husband and wife from the family. So, how does a person educate? The more important elements to bridge the gap between people of different ages no, are pretty, pretty easy. No? First one is giving example. The second one is fostering friendship. So, giving example is basic as well as necessary. Young people in their vitality and inexperience will always look for role models. They look for someone who displays the values that in their perception stand out, ordinarily influenced by the environment where they live. So, obviously, kung ano yung nakikita nila sa magulang, yun ang kanilang magiging understanding of what uh, sexuality is all about. Even if they do not realize it, they are still able to perceive spiritual values better than the material ones. One does not need to dress like them or speak like them, but uh, the old, older people should be open enough to understand their language and find a common ground. It is important that spiritual values like openness, truthfulness, cheerfulness, humility, sense of justice you'll be surprised no they the children actually recognize that a simple uh, thing as listening to them whenever they fight on who is right or wrong they listen and and they watch you and and they will learn from that no? simplicity and very important and outward serenity are cultivated not faked to become their true model even when these values no, are lacking, the simplicity of admitting one's defects and the request for forgiveness when necessary prepare the ground for friendship. Friendship is the second element. Friendship demands that we take the younger people seriously and spend time with them. We will never be able to help someone if we do not know him. Even more, we will never be available to help them when they need us more. If we created the distances and do not sacrifice for their sake, for that's what a true friend does, diba? Right? Friendship is built up little by little in a growing confidence and can be easily destroyed in a moment of rage or misunderstanding. Yung pagpinagalitan niyo yung anak niyo na hindi niyo pinapaliwanag kung bakit. That will destroy friendship. It is also important to count on the environment to help our young friends. So the easiest way of facilitating the proper environment no, is actually something that you can make. Things like youth clubs, summer initiatives, organizing friends and family gatherings, fostering values through sports no, and events are the right tools to bring people together and reshape role models. It's also very important to make the young ones appreciate the joy of being together and enjoying nature and the good things of life. Which comes to the last point, 
as you will note, I've never talked about school. Let's go to the concept of delegation. It is possible for parents not to delegate an educative function to the school. For example, in teaching the different subjects, I'm sure not uh, everyone here is a master in calculus, no? But this does not mean that the parents can forget about these delegated functions. The school is the complement of the family. Teachers cooperate with parents. And I merely use the word cooperate because it is the parents who always retain the principal responsibility in the education of their children. In, on the other hand, no, parents have to participate in the life of the school and facilitate the task of the teachers. May pagagawa, tulungan yung mga teachers no, para gawin ng bata. Parents are an integral part of the school, a fundamental part. The type of education which the school undertakes must not be opposed to the type of education which the parents have chosen freely and responsibly for their children. In fact, the founder of Opus Dei has insisted that in a school, no, the first are the parents, then the teachers, and then lastly, the students. So among the various organs of education, the Vatican Council once declared that the school is of outstanding importance in nurturing the intellectual faculties, which is its special mission, it develops a capacity for sound judgment and introduces the pupils to the cultural heritage bequeathed to them by former generations. It fosters a sense of values and prepares them for professional life. By providing for friendly contacts between pupils of different characters and backgrounds, it encourages mutual understanding. The decisions that a person makes in the course of a lifetime depend to a great degree on the kind of formation he or she has received at school. True educators no, never limit themselves to merely academic instruction. They seek the integral development of the person. When teaching intellectual habits to their students, they also form their consciences. And this has a powerful influence on the rest of their lives. Therefore, from a moral and religious point of view, there's no such thing as a neutral school no? or a school na tinatanggal bigla yung mga crucifixes. Either it gives an education in keeping with Christian principles or it ignores Christ totally with all the serious consequences that brings with it. However, the important thing is not that the school be Catholic in name, but in practice, in its teaching in the formation it gives, in the values it develops. It is so when the teachings of the church are faithfully followed. That is the end of my talk, and I thank you all for listening. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Saint Gabriel, pray for us. St. Paul, pray for us. Holy Mary, our hope and seat of wisdom, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I beg your pardon for my sins and the grace to spend this time of prayer fruitfully. My Immaculate Mother, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my guardian angel, intercede for me.
we come to the last uh, part of this two hour of monthly recollection online. And uh, well, we carry on our prayer, our examination of conscience and resolutions to come and to follow. And uh, we have been uh, meditating on the love of uh, our Lord Jesus Christ to the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist that uh, are renewed uh, in all masses celebrated. That's why we have uh, meditated and talked about how important the mass for us uh, all the time not only a certain period of time and when we are uh, getting into senior then as if we have we, we are done and the rest is just uh, relax and uh, wait for the time no nope. we know that it's ongoing and all the time even more sedus even more concentrated even more uh, uh, understanding what's uh, going on appreciating, loving the Mass very, very much to make it as the center and root of our life. That's the love of Jesus. And if uh, there is love between husband and wife, between uh, us and the Lord, and love between the employees and the employers, and those who provide work and those who are working and giving them uh, their uh, corresponding salary. So, well, there is that service, there is that love, there is that care uh, that one gives to the other and vice versa. Do we want to give back to the Lord the love that He has shown us? It may be difficult. We tell the Lord, Mahirap. It's very hard, Lord. Cannot be. No, not only very hard. It's impossible. You say to return? No way. He's God and we are human beings. He is infinite and we are just, just the limited, finite creature. And besides, if we understand why he came all the way from uh, being God of the universe and uh, one day entering our uh, humanity to be like us, out of love, that is because we are uh, getting, we will get lost. There is no way to get back to our original plan, which is to be uh, with our Creator, to be with God. There is no chance, there is no way, there are no means to carry that out. So much so that, well, uh, the, <laughs> now that we open our eyes and our mind and say, well, Lord, what is the little thing that I that we could do? No, we cannot return love to love. But could we try? Yeah. Open. Our Lord is very open. He said, Yes, of course. He knew he knows uh, who we are. He knows that we have fallen human nature. He knows that we have all those uh, uh, tendencies, inclinations of our human uh, being. He knows that. And that's why when he, when he came, he gave us uh, all the necessary means to take so that it will lead us the way and not getting lost because we are already lost. And if there is no guide, uh, there's no one uh, in front of us, then where we, to whom will you follow? We follow our own? Oh, we'll not arrive at the right place. Anywhere, yes, you keep on doing this and that, but one day you just fall into it, 
just like animals, dead and uh, nowhere to go. But our Lord is here and says, okay, then I want to lead you back. Follow me. Come. I am the way. I am the truth. And I am the life, the real life that he talks about. Not this one, but the one of uh, life after. Life eternal. And so he said, just come and follow me at my back. So that's what we have to do. You, we want to return that love to the Lord. No, he said, yes, uh, you will love us through the cross, through this Holy Eucharist. You stay here uh, in front of us. So how can we uh, follow you closely? Well, I am the way and I already asked everybody, not only a few. Of course, the sample of those chosen ones, uh, Peter, John, James, the few. It's personally inviting them. But eventually, through the church, he is telling us through the church, say, come in. Come in. And here, we have already a spiritual leader, no? someone who really cares, who, want, who really loves us. And look at that. Look at that. Look at the, in front, the crucifixion. That is the love that he shown us. Uh, don't get lost. Follow. There. If that way we uh, really love, we appreciate, you know, and we see that, uh, is she the one? Or there is another one? <laughs> because, you know, being human, we may be choosy. You know? Is this Jesus to follow? Maybe there are other uh, spiritual leaders. And there are, truly enough, uh, some others that have sprout out, no? like the Islam, Muhammad, uh, the Buddhists also, even before Christ, and many, many other groups that just prop up without very, I mean, connected with the Lord. Uh, they are on their own. Well, meaning they are at a loss. Our Lord already said there is only this way, one way. It's our Lord. He's the truly, truly one God. If there are many gods, then you follow your own. No problem. But we believe in one God. God that everybody will look up. But this God manifested, incarnated, through the humanity of Jesus Christ. And then he proved it with the truth. The truth that he says, yes, I am the truth. Are you saying the truth? Then the proof of the very beautiful teachings that he had with the crowds, with the people, and of course, the miracle to prove that he is truly God. Lord, we cannot say otherwise. We just have to really follow you, and uh, what is which? What is the way? We just follow. You have appointed uh, the Holy Father. The, uh, you have established the Church, you no, know, and will tell us uh, the truth that you have taught uh, the apostles and transmitted to all of us. And we want to know. We want to understand. You no, know, we want to discuss. And then discover, uh, uh, well, not a new truth, but something that is, would be practical, that uh, from this truth we will be able to uh, transform it into reality, into our own very, very lives. It's for eternal life. And that's why, Lord, that, that love uh, that we want, uh, who doesn't want? Everybody wants uh, that eternal life promise. But if uh, you like that life, then obey the commandments. And he's, our Lord said that. Only you, you love. You, you, you love the Lord. Okay. Very concretely follow the commandments. Oh Lord, I know the commandments. I memorize the commandments. But to follow each one of them, I 
I would fail, and you also, and everybody. Why? Because, well, uh, there are those capital sins that uh, we could remember. You know, I have uh, pride in me. I have greed when I look around. I have envy. No envy for the others' uh, talents. So I, 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 I want to eat more gluttony. Uh, though even worse would be uh, I have the concupiscence, Lord, lust, and all this will contribute to my disobeying, my offending you, lightly, seriously, mortally. Then I am dead, if that is the case. If our Lord says, no, that's very serious. Cannot do that. You have to run away. But before running away, the devil got you, got us, that we cannot run and still shaking. And say, well, okay, because you're very slow. It's your fault. You, you, you knew it, but then you did not pray. You did not get out of that uh, uh, situation you give in to the temptation there you are you're caught by the devil so i committed sin of uh, lust of sensuality of porno of masturbation all sorts of those things of the sixth commandment that our lord is a you want eternal life this one have to be avoided of course, these are not the only ones, but there are many. So uh, we can review uh, the uh, commandments and we can see where our weaknesses are for the others. is the seventh commandment, corruption, money, you know, power. You know, I, I have all these things. You know? But what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world but suffer his soul? And the rich one that we can mention here would be, wow, the richest man uh, here in, in our country, uh, Henry C. last year, or last last year. Very rich, many moles. But when the time comes at, in his 90s and he has to go, even with the best doctors, called around and say, okay, give me more life. No more, sir. It's time. He has to go. Also, he died, and but with, without uh, bringing any of the money from BDO or any moles. That's uh, always I keep in mind. So much so when you you look around, say, wow, I like that. Also, wow, I I like to be uh, my friend. No, he's very successful. No. We just have to be good uh, followers of the Lord, uh, obeying the truth, the commandments, and we'll be happy uh, carrying out. So his love for us carried uh, on the cross. We know he died on the cross and uh, for our sins. And Lord, we have sins, venial, mortal uh, sins, and maybe several do we look for forgiveness, especially now that it's pandemic and, uh, well, we are careful to go to the parish church. And even if the parish uh, will allow, it's only limited to 10, 15 at a time because it, uh, you know, takes time. How about my sins? How could I be forgiven? I have offended because I gave in uh, to my weakness, uh, to my uh, anger, to my being unreasonable, to my hatred, you know, wanting to get back. Wow! One after the other. You see? These are the things that happen in our mind, in our heart, uh, even in our lips when we get mad at a uh, road uh, traffic you know, and somebody cuts us you, know, ah, you, ah, you say something bad curse words is that okay someone heard it the others also heard it you hurt the people and you give we give bad example 
Well, these are uh, <laughs> sins that we do commit every now and then. Uh, we can say every day we do commit sins. And the only way, the best way, is to acknowledge them. That's why we have this recollection. Otherwise, we do not know. Otherwise, no, no one is telling us reminders like a while ago, uh, not the talk, but the examination of conscience. Although, uh, when, you were, when uh, you were listening, uh, there were some questions that are asked uh, not during a pandemic. It's just the sort of the regular life that we had before. You know, the same questions is, uh, has been asked. It, uh, it, we, we did not change it anymore. But there, it still uh, will uh, help us see you know, how uh, in those uh, questions we are being uh, reminded. You know, did I do this? Did I do that? How many times am I willing to ask forgiveness? Am I sorry? Am I doing it every now and then? Meaning it's already a habit and I cannot stop it. And if I don't stop it, I'm offending the Lord and it's something serious. So what? What do we decide? Continue? Or say, Lord, help me. I'm sorry, but help me because uh, tomorrow, the day after tomorrow, the temptations will uh, come again. Uh, I cannot say no. I cannot uh, delete uh, things that I see in my gadget. I will fall again to sin. Well, freedom, that's what we say. Uh, we, are, we have the freedom of the children of God. We want to follow our Father. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the truth, then we should be very happy uh, doing many things, favors, no? uh, really uh, trying to please Him in what we do uh, at work, uh, at home, work at home with the family, no? and making, uh, you know, making up. We have committed sin, and uh, what are the, the make up? Uh, the penance, well, the priest gave me three Hail Marys or one rosary for heavy, not having gone to, to uh, confession for uh, one year. And so, is that very, very difficult or heavy? Well, very easy. In 20 minutes, I am done. And for the sins that I have committed for a year, is that cons consumerate? Consumerate to the gravity of your sins? Maybe not. Wow. Lord, is she forgiven? Well, if the priest gave that light uh, penance and you, the, the penitent does it, then that's it. But just the same, the penitent, we will say, Lord, sorry. What else can I do to show really my contrition, my contrite heart? Then the list of mortification that we can do every now and then or daily at work with the family, with friends. They are not big ones wherein we Holy Week already. So, what is my panata? Well, there in Pampanga, the panata would be, I will carry the cross on Good Friday. A show along the street of uh, Pampanga. Or any other sort of big mortification that one would think only during Lenten season. I would not eat only during the Holy Week. Well, not, that's not the way. Maybe our Lord will say, well, the, 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 the sacrifices that we can uh, make and offer to God would be based on the daily, daily, ordinary, little things that we can offer. As we have said, 
we are with the family, with the siblings, uh, with parents. And so the mutual love, respect, uh, the help you can, the control of one's temper so that we don't shout, we don't uh, quarrel. Husband and wife can just let go instead of arguing heatedly and then you know, getting mad at each other. No need. Those, those could be offered up to the Lord so that we, you don't give bad example to the children. And the children, the same. That uh, owing uh, respect for the parents, well, they obey. They, they, they follow what uh, they want. So it's just from the family and then when they proceed uh, going out and uh, start working uh, with their colleagues, uh, friends, then the same. Giving good example, uh, greeting them with a smile, you know, joyfully bringing that joy in that environment uh, instead of uh, getting mad at someone because well, he doesn't behave. At work, the whole day that we are there working, we can offer up these little penances, lists of mortifications that are very ordinary and yet very effective because people will see how we are, how we behave, that we are not brutal, we are not shouting, we are not quarreling, we have no enemies anywhere, that we love them, that we care. If we make an effort to do that, then the sins that we may commit in the past, or even at now, then slowly our Lord is saying, well, you're uh, paying, you're uh, covering up uh, those uh, debts, utang, uh, that we may have. Well, pay. Pay now, no? because later we want to be with the Lord and not pass on to another state temporarily, which we call purgatory. So purgatory will be now. We want to do it now if, if it's possible. No? And in doing so, we are even uh, helping the society because we are giving good example. Because we are showing love and love, love and care for the others. Or even at work, when we don't feel like doing things, we are tired, no, we want to do it fast, no, but then we want to do it the best. Sanctify, you no, know, putting again Saint Osa Maria into the picture and say, Well, Saint Osa Maria has taught that to sanctify my work here in the school, in the hospital, because I am a doctor, or in this factory, because I am a technician, anywhere. We can put to practice the teaching of Saint Jose Maria. And when we do that, when we follow, then our Lord will be very pleased and say, Yes, that's not only Lent, not only uh, some time uh, during the ordinary time, but it's all the time. And that is what is best all the time. As we have uh, still uh, years years to go that uh, we are busy working it's in our mind to say well lord i am a sinner and every night i have to examine again if i misbehave uh, at home or wherever i go uh, with my family members or with uh, friends we examine check because you want to know even small things it's not something that you get a quarrel, fight with someone, but small things that we neglected that maybe we have promised to do, but then uh, we forgot or uh, we gave uh, importance to some other things instead of God. So that's something to take note. No, okay, not God first before any, any others. That should be the, the, the order. God first, the others, and then whatever I like myself. Yes, that is what we want to get to do uh, in uh, also preparing for the coming Lenten season in 
in a week's time or two, well, we start the Lenten season as Wednesday comes again as a reminder that, wow, we will go into this mode, a different mode. It's a violet uh, color you know, from green to violet and leading up to the Holy Week. So what that does mean? Oh, because of our sins, Lord, uh, you will show again your love through your passion, death, and resurrection. It's a commemoration again, right? repeatedly last year, this year, and until uh, we are still breathing, we will we will personally you know, uh, live into it. Uh, but some others, we have some friends who just passed away and was cremated just uh, the other day. Then uh, I said, Mabuti pa siya. Tapos na. And uh, he is uh, so prepared because he was just waiting. A cancer patient, stage uh, four already, and uh, metastasized to all the parts of the body. What do you expect uh, from that? It's just a matter of uh, days or weeks. And when one has passed away, having received the sacraments, then how happy we are for him, although we will still uh, include those souls, in, uh, souls departed to our prayer or at Mass, yet we know how lucky you are. You have already won the race. You have kept the faith, like St. Paul. You and I, uh, wishful thinking, will be saying that to the Lord, Sana kami rin. Sana tayo rin. Sana lahat. Everybody. If they want to follow, I will not pull your ears. Come, come, matigas ulo. No, 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 no. It will just be an invitation. Come and join us. Maybe it could uh, help you a little. And so if uh, we are able to convince people to uh, take uh, a little while and uh, join this recollection and it's just uh, uh, two hours and then next month again, wow, we are just uh, getting more and more people in love with the Lord. So we go to Our Lady, no, asking Our Lady as always, no, and uh, our devotion to say the Rosary is there. So Mama Mary uh, always intercede, and for us, take care of your children. We are your children. I thank you, my God, for the good resolutions, affections, inspirations that you have communicated to me in this meditation. I beg your help in performing them. My Immaculate Mother, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. Once I have seen a child